everyone, and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is the Spanish guy that tries to draw and keep the intros consistent, James Cork. And with me, I have podcasting machine and planes walker extraordinaire, Norman Sanso. Uh, I just had a horrible dream where I was in a room filled with ponies, pegasi, and a hippogriff. Look around, Norman. Oh, God, it's real. It's not a dream. Oh. Welcome to the real world. Oh, God. <laughs> I should have taken the blue pill. And super cutesy would see who's gonna kick your flank, reviewer Sapphire Hat Song. Mommy, don't make me go back to the scary Celestia Vas accountant person. I, I, the, I dead. Hi. You dead. <laughs> You're not dead. You're very much alive. Believe me. No. And last but not least, awesome brony reviewer. Silver Quill. Skins hat muss nicht so was Neues gehabt. Die Skrulls gibt das nie. Ja, Luffy, Luffy. Oh, no. <laughs> no, not again. He's doing the thing in his video again. Somebody put the fast forward button. Seems like he got infected by the Mary Sue virus. Now he's just able to talk backwards. Oh, no. It would make for an interesting podcast just to play all my audio backwards throughout the whole thing. Then you're gonna have the entire world trying to figure out what you were saying before they start calling you Illuminati. And this is different from my normal days, how? True that. Well, the fact that it's not the entire world, but just your YouTube channel, so. But, Silver today, Quill secretly with, Bill Cipher. Uh, I'm trying to introduce the comic! <laughs> it's chaos <laughs> already! Indeed. Uh, which, in the wake of uh, the, the Discord Day, we are going to talk about Comic number 20 of the Friends Forever series, which features Discord and Princess Luna, written by Jeremy Whitley, with art by Brenda Hickey, and colors by the always awesome Heather Breckel. So, in this one, the synopsis is rather simple. Discord's been having nightmares, and Princess Luna is tasked with the mission of figuring out why is Discord having all of these anxiety problems and nightmares and oh, all this stuff, before he turns Ponyville into a painting by Salvador Dali. <laughs> Uh, what follows are a bunch of pop culture references, and oh my god, I don't know what to think of this one. So guys, what did you think of this comic? And I'm on the helm, I have the wheel this time, you cannot take that away from me. I'm gonna go with inverted alph alphabetical order, so Silver, what did you think of this comic? Yay! <laughs> well, see, you, you have my favorite princess, you have one of my favorite characters... But more importantly, you have a uh, comic that explores both their characters in a setting that is fluid, visually diverse, and best of all, absurd. So, uh, I just enjoyed it from start to finish, pretty much. From the visuals, to Discord's shifty nature, to Luna's uh, rigid insistence, but eventually coming around to understand how he feels. This is not just a great comic because it... it you know, panders to the fans with two favorite characters. It is a great comic because we just we love the characterization of it. Funniest of all, Jerry Wheatley seems to catch a lot of flack for writing, for his writing, uh, especially after Siege of the Crystal Empire. But he really nailed it with this comic, I think. I don't think that Jeremy Wheatley catches as much flack as uh, Ted Anderson does, which it's. I think it's it's weird. I agree with you in that regard. That sometimes he gets a lot of luck, unfairly so. And what about you, Sapphire? What do you think of this comic? I surprisingly liked it. Okay, I'm pretty sure you guys know my status. I don't like Luna. But it's mostly because of the fans and whatnot. I'm sorry, guys. I love you all, but I've had crap back during the early days of the Brony fandom that scarred me for life. Ugh. But... I surprisingly enjoyed this comic. I thought I was going to hate it, and it was going to be fan pandry, and then I would be rolling my eyes, but no. I It had a good story. It had great visuals, art. I just surprisingly enjoyed it, and I can't... I'll explain, like, f further on. It'll be obvious, so... Just to um, answer to what you said about... The, the, the fans hating it. What do you mean you hate it? You must be a witch! Burn you! Burn her! Burn the witch! It's yes. hard to... <laughs> there you go. Oh, and, uh, I see. This it's, is how I get treated. Oh. It, it, it's, it's hard not to like something that the rest of the world likes, right? Mm-hmm. 
Well, I was yeah. in a state where Luna fans would just hate on Celestia, and that really bothered me. Especially, like, I did like Luna. I liked her character design. I didn't care about characterization back way back when. But then, people made me think. Oh no, that's terrible. The fiends. It's the worst possible thing, darling. How oh. dare they? But I must ask, what state were you in? Was this Wisconsin? Was this Nebraska? Oh god, oh, I, was I think it's Nebraska. Nebraska. Oh, country. <laughs> Oh, I guess I must do too. <laughs> oh god, I actually have a funny story about that. I'll tell it later when people care. Ugh. You know what? Even if we go random, it will make sense because it fits for Discord. But we really have to get get cracking okay, on this okay, one. So, okay, Norman, okay. what do you think of this comic? Well, the two combos of Discord and Luna is just strange. You would never think of them to be in a comic together or star in a comic together but somehow they made it work and I do like how the whole comic flows from one scene to the other even with the whole randomness in the middle and the office part you, you get to see the mindset of this court and how he feels and thinks that ending though wow just nice well it seems I'm gonna be the grouchy grouchy one for this one <laughs> oh my god I'm not I'm not prepared for this one being the voice of descent I like this comic <laughs> with a silver lining though. I, I wasn't all that big a fan of all the co- pop culture references, especially towards the end. It gets to the point where they get distracting. Like the interaction between Luna and Discord, it's good to see how these two former villains, if we could consider Luna a villain, of course. Yeah, Nightmare Moon, everything, all that. Yeah, whatever. Uh, so. Yeah, it's a, it's a good comic for the interaction, even though the pop culture references get in the way every now and then. But, now we're gonna get hip deep into spoilers, so if you haven't read the comic yet, don't, don't listen anymore. Stop now, go get the comic, read it, and then come back. Because now we, we, we're like, spoilers, no holds bar, so, you've been warned. Okay. Stop the warning. Let's go into the reviewing. So we start with Discord, uh, just sleeping there, just hugging a, Koala or a teddy bear? It doesn't look like a teddy bear. It looks like a koala. As he gets slapped in the face, uh, woken up. Only to be woken up to a discorded version of Ponyville. <laughs> and I think we can spend the rest of the review talking about this page now, can we? Yeah, we can, but... <laughs> we can. I like the Hamataro Pikachu thing in the corner next to the sheep in the teapot. That's... Oh my god, I didn't even notice that thing. You're right. It's so cute! Uh, Spike at the centaur? No one? Really? Spike as a pony? <laughs> no, it's not a pony. He's a centaur. Look, I, all I can say is I feel Spike should be free to express himself. There's no need to, there's no need to centaur him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Spike is gonna be, a, go around. I identify as a centaur king. Thank you very much. <laughs> mm, if, uh, I'm so offended right now. Mm? <laughs> Fish with legs, though. Oh, wow. Is yeah, this, but... Is this some gumball reference, or what? <laughs> I don't know. It's something that, uh, uh, right out of SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> and, and, and the clouds from Kirby. The, the, the spiky, angry clouds from Kirby. Let's just say that this page is just full of things that we can point out, but let Upside down house. The, this, the, this course <gasps> is... Uh, what? What do you mean this? Flow. Flowey. Flowey, where? Oh god, you're right! It is Flowey! <laughs> With sunglasses! Well, this came yes. out before Undertale was yeah, a thing, I guess. True, but still! Aww. But anyway! It is Flowey. We have Flowey there. Uh, but, yeah. This, this, this court's, this court's magic is definitely out of control, especially when he is, uh, when he is during, uh, sleeping. So, Celestia tasks no one else but Princess Luna to solve the situation. And, uh, that, 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 there goes the scene where Luna visits Discord in Flutterstay's cottage. Luna has the best methods to deal with therapy, doesn't she? Okay, now you go to sleep. Oh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to fall asleep. I'm, I've had a lot of cups of tea and all that sap. So I ain't up with that your nonsense. Somebody kiss him. To wake him up. Because sap why that not? sleep. I'll, I'll leave that to you. You okay. have home. <laughs> You go to town. Oh, uh, but I want a game. 
Discord silver shipping for no reason. What? <laughs> I don't know. We are not. Are, are, are we really going there? Oh, Mage, really going there? Mage, beat you to it. As everyone tries to shoot me with everything under the sun. <laughs> uh, I'm a lone wolf, baby. Oh, wow. You think you can ship anything? Well, we can ship anything, too. Well, this FedEx. Anything you can ship, we can ship better. Stop it. <laughs> We're definitely drifting away from the comic. I wonder why is that. I told you guys that I'm not very good at driving. It's been a while. Uh... Besides, we didn't even figure out if we were gonna go with, uh, through scenes or themes. We're going with scenes, let's go. We're going scene by scene though, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, it, it doesn't take long for Discord to fall asleep after getting stabbed by Luna's magic, and right away he's falling. Although, I just do want to point out Fluttershy's bugging eyes when Luna zaps him, I mean. <laughs> oh, of course, I mean, look at that, she, she could have killed Discord right there, for all she knew. Then there's Luna, it's like, okay, let's just get this over with. Ugh. Yeah. She's like me in the morning. Luna is a be- Luna is very much the straight, the straight mare on this comic. She's very no nonsense. I'm not gonna make funny faces or silly jokes. I'm here to get the job done. Kind of Luna. She kind of have to in this situation, but it's surprising to me that this comic here Oh, the comic version of Luna in this one doesn't play it off like how we get from Katie Cook's version of Luna. Like, oh, uh, oh you mean the, the playful, happy go lucky, playful, playful, happy go lucky, over, the over the like, you said, stuff yeah. Over eccentric, yeah. Yeah, because if we see in previous versions of Luna, like, the fan really cling on to the comic Luna because, well, look how Katie Cook written her like she's so much fun energetic and fun this one should we should we talk about how luna is in comparison to discord like stop that track they on the tracks right now of the review and just talk about how she is i think we can touch upon it but both of them are yeah, still that... young and well i <laughs> see young both of them have been locked away for a thousand years and both of them were previously villains and well they have a lot of in common Except that she mostly remembers him as trying to torment her and her sister. Uh. So, so I think Luna is, of all the ponies, Luna would be the one to hold a grudge the longest. Mm-hmm, true, because a thousand years locked away into the moon has, well, she doesn't have time to simmer off. Like her bigger sister, she has time. Well, also she's not as mature as Celestia. But I could totally see Discord throwing her Nightmare Moon status back in her face. Uh, but that we didn't see that well, in this comic. Then, the, yeah, then again, it's the thing with, uh, with, it's the one nexus between Discord and Luna. The one thing they had in common, they are both redeemed villains. They are both redeemed, uh, for, they are, they are former buddies. You see? In this situation, it kind of causes a, a similar dynamic than the one, the, the comic with, uh, with uh, Trixie and Babs. In a, in a different, in a different level. In a different level. I gotta say this, the ask you guys, like, would you consider Luna as a villain? Like, seriously, Luna herself. Aren't we supposed to tag it with Nightmare Moon? Yeah. Um, I don't think so. Luna let the Nightmare consume her. Yeah, but. It was, it was, it was the envy that turned her into Nightmare Moon. Yeah, but sometimes when you think about it, I, I don't know, even she thinks like, a nightmare moon thing was a curse upon her and to me the way i look at it the way i feel it's kind of not fair to say that she, luna is the villain like it's supposed to be nightmare moon but eh it's either or well you can say that bruce wayne is in batman but he is batman so but we're not when same you person, have a split personality different, different same person different form are you sure that Batman is not a split personality of Bruce Wayne? No, I mean, I'm not talking about that. I'm the similar about... way that Nightmare Moon is a split personality of Luna. Well, Nightmare Moon and Princess Luna are two different entities. Batman yeah. and Bruce Wayne are the same. Not really. You don't see Bruce Wayne being Batman as Bruce Wayne. You see Bruce Wayne being Batman as Batman. I don't think the point is getting across all that well. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but no, I'd always consider Luna uh, b- a part of the Nightmare Moon conundrum. It's like that she 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 had to let that part of her invade her and turn her into 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 the bad guy. I'm sure that our loyal fans will point something out to us 
And oh, I'm sure they're there. gonna scream. Uh, uh, they, they're gonna scream their faces at how I am so wrong about oh, it. How I, am I so wrong? Like you know, oh, we'll, we'll take a look see. But everybody loves you, Norman. Everybody loves you. <laughs> the people don't agree with what I have. So yeah. You know what this podcast and the comic has in common? We get they off no track structure. so often that there is no structure. It's nothing but well, pure chaos. <laughs> I didn't see what you The best thinking. kind of chaos. It's the oh, best yes. kind, yeah. Between the Discord silver shipping and... Now, you see, this is what happens when you put me on the wheel. Uh, After, oh, yes. like, what, three or four weeks of not doing it? Oh, Do yes, you because... see why we picked you? <laughs> <laughs> because all of us have had such st- steady, stern control over the past ones with ne- with never, ever, ever going off track. <laughs> You've been uh, doing so much better than me, though. <laughs> but anyway, I, I think we're we're off track for a bit now, and let's continue on with business ponies. We skip how Discord lives in a Discord streams in in Super Mario levels, and 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 yellow brick roads. I do love how how straight faced Luna is. She says, "Yours is the single most disorganized mind I've ever seen," and Discord is just so touched by her. Compliment. It's so nice to be appreciated. Yeah. Bre- Brenda Hickey. Brenda Hickey draws this card way, way too adorable. Oh, <laughs> uh, you weren't adorable. Just wait for a few pages. Oh God, yes. Oh yeah. Uh, because as as they get chased by the by the business ponies, which is like it's 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 rather funny how in a in a mind that is dis- as disorganized and as chaotic as this card, the the one nightmare that he has is not. It's, it's, it's order. It's like, it's when someone tries to put some order into it, it's like the, it's not paperwork, what's the, bureaucracy! His nightmare is the bureaucracy. Imagine Discord in the Applejack and, and Major Mare comic. Oh, that would be oh, hell! Ponyville wouldn't have survived. But that's the perfect kind of situation for someone Rules who is. Rules and regulations. Into, yeah. yeah, his nightmare is business points. But really, across several of these nightmares, the real fear is, being forced to conform. Mm. I mean, the scariest figure in his uh, dreams is Princess Celestia, the embodiment of order. True that. And that business suit looks good on her. I yeah. don't know. It, it, it's <laughs> contra- It's a little too close to Principal Celestia for me. I, yeah. it, you know, it's giving me all the wrong ideas. That, <laughs> that, that, that's... Uh, let's just say Bayonetta. <laughs> Every single wrong idea. And then the chains come in. Yep. Yeah, but still, this is what Silver mentioned about order. Princess Celestia is the embodiment of order and... What's the word for it? Order and... I forgot, but still. And Discord is, well, chaotic and just wants to have fun. Okay, I should clarify because I know that Celestia fans will flock to her defense. After all, she has more than a few times introduced little chaos just for funsies. But hers is more playful. When you take these... Uh, this comic. That is, this is something that they don't do in the TV show. This, actually, this is, this is something that I don't think the TV show will ever do. Um, show Discord as, at the, uh, at the disadvantage in the, in a vulnerable place for the entire length of a story. Because this is, this is Discord being the weakest. This is Discord, uh, like, regressing back to being a, a, a child. This is Discord in a, in a, in a position of disadvantage. This is him showing his fears. Something that we haven't seen before. We, 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 we know Luna's fears. We know Celestia's fears, I think. We know Twilight's. We know everyone else's, but not, not Discord's. Well, that's where the comic comes in and experiments with stuff because they are allowed to, well, play around with the characteristics of certain characters. Well, well, we sort of know his fears, like based on keep calm and flare on and the further relationship with Fluttershy from there. Like, he doesn't uh, that, want to lose friends. That, that was, like, a glimpse. That that lasted for, like, um, 10, 15 Still seconds, like, maybe. Like, later on, you kind of realize he doesn't want to lose friends. Yeah, of course not. Even but... with the jealousy um, story in, what was it? Um, no, is that, I'm not saying that we didn't see it. I'm saying that, I'm saying that we haven't seen it for an entire like issue or an entire episode or like the, okay. the whole length of it. We didn't we didn't delve into it. Like we have seen it, but we haven't sunk under the under underneath the surface. This comic is doing exactly that, which I think is pretty neat. Mm-hmm. 
And well, next page we get to see Luna in a trench coat. Hey, hey, I'm driving. I'm driving. You're not driving. <laughs> Who do you think you are? I'm a backseat driver. Yes, you are. Get off the wheel. But yeah, we see Luna as uh, Lawrence Fishburne <laughs> in the Matrix, of course. <laughs> As they, they, they do go through a corridor of doors, just like in the Matrix. No, no, wait a minute. Was it that in episode, uh, in uh, episode four of season five? Or, no, wait. It's, it's part of it now, isn't it? That has happened in the show. Yes, there are many doors. Many, many doors. Yes, they found the, the rift. <laughs> yeah, and each door leads to a dream. Mm-hmm. And this is just confusing. Why are there so many doors in Discord's brain? Because he adores everything. Aha! I see what you did there. Silver, never change. I don't yeah. intend to. The, ah. the, by the way, shout out to Munch. To Munch? The Scream. The, the, yeah, the sc- uh, Munch is oh. the, the, the artist. Scream, Discord was... going, don't say that! <laughs> is that, that that's, a, that's, a, that's a shout out to uh, that famous painting. But, but oh, yeah, my... in this here... A segment of the comic, we go through each and every one of the dreams that Discord has with e, with each one of the main six, and they all end in absolute disaster. Right, he gets her dress blown into her face. Uh, he treads with muddy boots all over Twilight's house in like a sitcom kind of situation, like a I Love Lucy type. Uh, of it's, like. Yeah, it, it's the odd couple. He, da, 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 he, he, da, da. Oh, is it? <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah, it's exactly the odd couple. The fact that neither of you knew that leads me to believe that I am exceptionally old. I'm sad now. I used to watch the odd couple TV show as well, even before watching the before watching the movie. But I didn't make the connection. There are so many because the format has been copied so many times. Is that it could be anything? I didn't know that it was specifically the odd couple. <laughs> I'm not saying it to make you feel young. <laughs> Forgive me, for I was born in 1997, so, like, two years before Silver went to college. <laughs> I still cannot get over the fact that, that you, oh my god, you go, I'm so young. You go to hell. You go to hell, you die. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, we, we see every door that they try to go through ends up with a friend being hurt. And, well, there's one door that Discord doesn't want Luna to go through, and that's Fetishai. And this Discord is piece all this is where the comic goes goes weak for me. Really Just, no. Uh, le- no, seriously, this is where the comic kind of like drops the ball for me. Really? No. This is where I am. No, really, really, seriously. Like because we go into that door, and of course it's 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 the door dedicated to Fluttershy. Uh, and this is the one that Discord fears the most because he doesn't want to disappoint her. Uh, although, as you are in the dream, you don't see anything going wrong, and Luna is like, but what's going on? They all, they are all super happy. They, they, they are fine. Why are you worried? And Discord is like, because uh, I'm a force of nature, I cannot control myself. Sooner or later, I'm going to end up hurting them, and that's going to be the worst part. And that would be a great poignant moment if it wasn't because throughout this entire exchange, all I can think of is Firefly. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's a reference to Firefly. Yeah. That's a reference to the to the Josh Whedon TV show. That's Mal Reynolds. That's that's the the crew of the of the of the Serenity. That's that's the. It, it's a reference to Firefly. The whole time I was thinking, take my take the land, take the sea. You can take the sky from me. <laughs> it's like I cannot concentrate on this part of the comic. Really, it's because... impossible for. No, seriously, yes. All the, bra- all the them brown coats, man. Come on, I can. Well, it's take brown. it from someone who has had never seen an episode of Firefly in her life, and I get you, that actually. You like, go to double hell. <laughs> 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 what? Say what? Who, who goes to hell where? Uh, Sapphire, you ain't never seen Firefly. You go to double hell. <laughs> you get double hell for you. It's it's thirteen episodes yes. long. It has a it has a movie that is not very good, but you should watch it anyway. Uh, I'm be emotional here, and then you ruin it by telling me I'm going to hell. I said, uh, forgive what? me, for I was born in 1997. Oh, honestly, <laughs> honestly, honestly, Sapphire, <laughs> you're fine. You know, if you watched, if, have you watched Avengers or Avengers: Age of Ultron? Yes, I actually went uh, to the Age of Ultron this summer. Okay, okay, okay. Take that 
and then put it in space. You watch Firefly. <laughs> Like, it, I don't it, care what you guys say. Josh Whedon has been writing the same thing for the past decade. <laughs> All I know about Firefly, I think, is that the guy who plays Castle in Castle played one of the characters. That's all yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, the guy. Oh, you like Castle? Maybe. I, I love I, Castle. I what are you talking about? I love, I, I, I love Castle. I, it's an awesome show. I had to watch it with my mother, like, back when she had her appendix removed. Like, after she got home, she watched nothing but Castle, and I had no choice but to watch with her. <laughs> I uh, like, back to the comic. A kindred spirit. Back to the comic. But, yeah, okay. I mean, it's yeah. personal opinion. Personal opinion. To me, the, the pop culture references get in the way of really? caring for the story or the drama. No, re- yeah. yes. Norman, can you say anything else but really? You're really? like a parrot. <laughs> Personally, for me, even with the Firefly reference, this scene was really touching, and I, um, I kind of teared up because looking at how Discord is afraid to hurt his best friend, like Fluttershy and the CMCs, and cares so much about them that he is afraid to hurt them. Like that's just heart touching. I think the first page you mentioned kind of a distraction but the next page is where the bomb drops in terms of feelings feelings nothing more than feelings feelings although if you want to talk distractions I was distracted by the fact we didn't get to see Applejack's dream you don't need to see Applejack's dream you know what it's going to be it's (laughs) it's going to be apples it's so true Apples, 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 apples. But it's because, really uh, look just at, we're trying to destroy all the apples in Sweet Apple. Look at the princess's a joke. Look at the princess's dream of magic sheep. That, that apples, 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 apples. Oh, are you kidding? I want I want an episode where Luna goes into Applejack's dream and sees her surrounded by lemons, and Applejack's like, "Don't look at me! Don't look at me!" <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Not doing it with the accent. Shame uh, on you. Okay. You got a quadruple hail, y'all! <laughs> <laughs> but, I don't know what are you trying to channel right now, Silver, but I don't know if I want to find out. I, th- I think, I think my Nova Scotian got in with my Western. <laughs> or Southern. No. Although I did somewhat like the, um, name that Luna gave Discord. Thank you, Mom. Discord B. Sullivan! Isn't that a reference to, to The Matrix? Because wasn't, uh, no, 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 it was Thomas oh, Anderson. It was Monsters Inc. No, the, the, but, yeah, no, you're right. Thomas Anderson was the name of Neo in The Matrix. It makes sense that it's Discord P. Sullivan because Monsters Inc. has a lot of doors as well, so yes. <laughs> uh, but we're nearing the end, so you know what? Let's rush it. No, it's, it's, we're practically, we're practically at the end already, mm-hmm. and that's, that's where Luna reassures Discord that, uh, no matter what, he's, uh, going to do his friends are going to be behind him. Like, he cannot change that. And Discord and Luna are kind of buddy buddies now with, well, <laughs> them playing cards. Yeah, they become acquaintances. Mm-hmm. It's important to note that Luna w- now writes her sister saying, yeah, I thought Discord was a lost cause. Why not, right? Negative feelings toward the villain. And she, but she felt that way about herself as well. Basically, she's redefining her worldview to, she says herself, the darkness, like chaos, is not the opposite of good, just the opposite of light. Wonderful, amazing, and beautiful things happen in the darkness. I watch those things happen through ponies' windows. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Uh, but anyway, we, with that, we are at the end of the comic. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's a good idea to do final thoughts. Silver, go ahead, you first. What are your final thoughts on this comic? Well, I just enjoy Luna and Discord's interaction overall. I enjoy, uh, I enjoy the pop culture references. I enjoy the visual absurdities. I enjoy the, the look at their more sensitive side. Uh, Luna in particular redefining her view and not, and starting to view Discord as a true friend. In the show, she's never had even one moment of true interaction with him beyond combat or what passes for combat with these two. This is one of my favorites. It's not just because it features favorite characters, it's because it uses them very, very well. This comic, the reason why it surprisingly 
like, got to me. I also enjoyed, like, the references and the character interaction, but the ending and with Discord, I actually could somewhat relate to, and that really struck with me. Because I have, like, this pattern, and I've always had this pattern of growing up, like, I am shut in, then I, like, am picked up by, like, a group of friends, I slowly open up to them to the point where I just sort of troll them. But then I wonder, when am I going to hurt them? When I saw that discuss, it's like, sort of made me think I'm not the only one who thinks that and whatnot, and I just enjoyed it, and that moment alone just got to me. And it probably helped that I didn't get the Firefly reference because I don't watch Firefly. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, double hell. (laughs) What the the hell? Uh, I guess it's me then. I like this comic. I like it a lot. That ending that they have where... This course, just expressing his feelings was really heart touching, and I like it. The only part that I find a bit tiring was Discord's um, kind of dream with Rarity and Twilight. It kind of dragged on a bit, and it felt boring to me. But other than that, it's a fine comic. I do love the art by was it now Brenda Hickey? Yeah, Brenda. It was really good, and the writing by... Damn, I'm bad with names. Jeremy Whitley. Yeah, <laughs> Jeremy Whitley was pretty good. And it's okay, you can you can change my, my voice and put it in your in your voice instead to make you sound smart. Yeah, but anyway, I like it. It's very good, and, well, I would recommend it. Despite my gripes with the last part of the comic, where I couldn't get involved into the emotion of the the scene, because all I can think of was we are we're called the brand coats because we're always covered in, yeah. <laughs> uh, the 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 rest of the comic is really good. It's super imaginative. It's very creative. Love the 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 visuals in it. Yes, for the art for the art alone, is worth the price of admission. This is the same artist who did the Pinkie Pie and Twilight uh comic. And the, the King Sombra Finship is Magic issue. I mean, Brenda Hickey uh, uh, is slowly turning into one of my favorite artists next to Andy Price and Tony Flakes. It's like, it's so good. But even with that, the writing is really good. I love how restrained Princess Luna is. Like, how much of a straight mare she is. Like, I want to see more of this Luna. The, when, when, when people talk about Princess Luna, this is the Princess Luna that I have in mind. Not the one that is all, Jumpy, happy, go lucky. I'm gonna stuff my face full of cake, Princess Luna, that Katie Cook likes to write so much. This is the Luna that I like. The Luna like, the, the Luna that is, let's get down to business to defeat the Griffons. <laughs> Makes me really sad though, because I, I'm not sure how good the show is, is with cross media references and cross media continuity. I know that the, the, there was a reference to the, the the brony the the no the pony palooza uh, whatever in uh, one of the episodes in season five, but I don't know if they are gonna keep going forward with uh, with referencing the show, uh, referencing the comics or any written media on the show, which, which makes me sad. I would love to see uh, an episode with Discord and Luna uh, in them. So yeah, those are my final thoughts. Good comic. Sucks that the ending was so muddled in pop culture references, but yeah, I like it. Thank you very much. Then. Shall we talk about what we're, what we're going to be reviewing next week? Yeah, man. What's next week's job? Oh, yes. oh we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna be talking about, uh, Friends Forever issue number 21, starring Spike and Sekora, if I recall correctly. Mm-hmm. Right? Yep, yep. Written by Ted Anderson, with art by Agnes Garbowska, and for the, for one of the first times, not colored by Heather Brockle, by, but by Lauren Perry. Hmm. hmm. Interesting. Wait, isn't, didn't Lauren Perry did it a few times? Because I heard that name before. I have seen that name every now, appear every now and then. Yeah, maybe, maybe, hmm. who knows. Okay. But that will be another comic and another story for another time. Thank you guys so much for checking the MBS show. Thank you so much for listening in. If it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. So uh, we really appreciate you guys listening. There. See you guys next time. Have a good one. See ya. Bye-bye. Adios. <laughs> 
so happy to hear that. Just have that pulled out, just waiting for the end. Although of our... instead of that, shouldn't we shouldn't we be hearing? Ria da ria, oh yeah, negra da ria. Anyway.